Good evening, Dungeon Masters, I'm Baron de Rob. World building for its own sake is obviously a ton of fun, but too often we let the act of world building get in the way of actually playing D&D, likely the whole reason we're doing it to start with. If that's the case, how does one know what specific things need to be prepared so we can get straight into our sandbox campaign's first session, and what framework can we use to develop those things as rapidly as possible? Events have been set in motion, and if the player characters don't stop them, the world will be irrevocably changed. But what are these events? Is an evil princess trying to enslave a powerful dragon? Perhaps a demonic warlord is trying to open a portal to the material plane. Or maybe a magic-wielding fine artist has been painting portraits they can magically spy through the eyes of and is selling them to people in power. Whatever the antagonist is, they are working to upset the status quo. In addition to understanding the antagonist's objective, it's useful to think through why your antagonist is doing these things, not just what they are doing. Vengeance, jealousy, hatred, or fear might be an underlying motivation for their actions, but a primal drive for power and security are really the only long-term stable motivations. In essence, ponder not just what this antagonist is trying to achieve, but what they fear will happen to them if they fail to achieve it. That evil princess knows she might be assassinated by a rival noble in her court, so dominating a dragon and gaining its protection before it's too late is her goal. Understanding your antagonist's fears will help inform the campaign writing process later on. With the high-level antagonist's motivations and goals mostly fleshed out, defining a regional map is a solid next step. And we don't need to make this more complicated than necessary. For example, queue up some map-making software like Worldographer and crank the Generate Random Map button until you bump into a geomorph that speaks to you. After you've made your map, define where half a dozen or so settlements exist, like villages, cities, mining camps, etc., and scatter roughly the same number of adventure sites across the terrain as well well. These adventure sites are the interesting dungeons, ruins, or bizarre environments, which we'll flesh out later in the process. For each population center, ask yourself what trade, craft, or commodity the town is known for, and what unusual belief, custom, or ideology the citizens who live there observe. All the farmers take midday breaks to pray to the harvest god, or the quirky noble has banned peasants from using the color red, are the kinds of inspirational prompts which help demonstrate what makes each population center unique. Of course, powering through these 20 or so questions for a handful of towns can lead to creative exhaustion, so don't be scared to lean on random generators or steal ideas from history, literature, video games, or other creative works. A city inspired by Holland's 17th century speculative tulip market is enough words on paper to demonstrate why everyone is obsessed with unhealthy stock trading and the flower markets. Next, repeat this similar prompt building process for each adventure site. Think up and note down the location's description, and also make note of what the location's original purpose was. Orcs sleeping under a crumbling stone pavilion in a forest clearing might be a fine description, but the pavilion gets even more interesting when you note that a bygone druid circle used the bathing pool under that pavilion. These prompts will help build out the needed plot hooks for each location later in this process. Your main protagonist is extremely busy keeping their plans in motion, and need the help of underlings to accomplish specific tasks, and there is no task more important than MacGuffin hunting. Think through what goal your main antagonist has, and what people, places, artifacts, or information the antagonist needs in order to accomplish their goal. To return to our evil princess example, she might need to manufacture a crown made from dragon bronze, an unusual alloy cast in dragon bone molds and quenched in dragon's blood. As a result, the princess would need to locate mines to dig out the right materials, to slay dragons and harvest their bodies, and to retain a famous blacksmith skilled enough to handle this arcane metal casting process. She also needs a book which describes the casting process in detail. The mines, the minerals, the dragons, the blacksmith, the book, all of these MacGuffins should be scattered around the map among the various population centers as well as buried in the various adventure sites. For added interest as well as easier questions, quest hooking, think about what each one of these MacGuffins are able to do, or rather what special abilities each MacGuffin has, 
outside of the antagonist's intended use. Weapons cast from metal found in a unique copper mine, for example, might be great for dispatching fake creatures. Or the master blacksmith might be a powerful town mayor who has otherwise retired from the forge. These tangential abilities or skills add further interest to each MacGuffin and help drive the side plots involving them. Through these MacGuffin details, you'll build an idea farm for the various rumors your players can pick up on, and therefore rapidly get questing. Once each MacGuffin is placed on the map and we understand how some of these locations tie back to the main antagonist, it's also important to create reasons for the players to explore the map organically and find all these disparate MacGuffins. For each population center or adventure site, think through two reasons the location might be narratively connected to the other population centers or other adventure sites. A ruined lighthouse might have a few rare tulips rumored to be growing around the bottom of the tower, connecting this location to that Hollandesque town from earlier, but the tower might also be home to a bandit king who has kidnapped a different town's mayor's son for ransom. Even if the players are bumbling around the map while getting up to murder hobo mischief, the players can discover these bandits, save the young man from the cage in the basement, and learn from the bandit king's journal plans to sell the tulips after destroying most of them for an exorbitant profit margin. This exercise will help define the various other factions around your game world, and what their goals and fears are as well. Once each location's set of issues are established, cramming all the needed plot points into a small flowchart-style dungeon map will enable speedy session prep at a future time. Additionally, by relating your locale's disparate plot points to each other in this way, you can create an exploration system such that wherever the players are is the right place to be. All roads lead to Rome, or rather, the sandbox is really just one massive railroad. While we're talking about adventure sites, I'd like to mention the Kickstarter for Dungeon Morph Dice. These dice are made by the same people who created mapping tools like Hexographer and Dungeonographer, and I just want to say I have genuinely used and loved their products for years. This isn't even a paid sponsorship. These dice are great for rolling up some random dungeon map inspiration when you need a quick dungeon on the fly. If you'd like to check out the Tomb, Crypt, and Lair Dungeon Morph Dice for yourself, be sure to click the link in the description below. I'll also be raffling off some of their other dice sets at some point in the future, so be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Now back to the video. Over the span of a few hours, perhaps even just a single evening, you'll have all the stuff you need to start your campaign. But where do you start it? Your campaign is now an interconnected web of plot points which all pinball your players around the map, but there might not be a clear beginning location. If this is the case, ask yourself which adventure site you're most excited to run. Save that one for later so you have something to look forward to, and drop your players in front of your second favorite spot. Whichever site you pick, however, you'll need to foreshadow your main antagonist's central plot during this first session. Doing this will get your players' minds' gears turning about the larger story. Foreshadow this plot by offering distinct clues about the antagonist's goals and motivations. To return to the evil princess antagonist example, a dead herbalist outside Session 1's dungeon cave entrance, which is covered in poisonous shrubs, is a great starting example. The dead herbalist could have a letter in their pocket, signed by the princess's rival, and contains orders to make a poison and feed it to the princess. Additionally, this this foreshadowing doesn't have to have anything to do with the first session's quest, either. In fact, it's likely better if it doesn't. This foreshadowing element should stick out like a sore thumb, so players puzzle over it and save the information for later. If you'd like a worksheet to guide your campaign creation using this method, check the link in the description below. Focus on scaffolding the relevant aspects of your game world and set yourself up for easy future session prep. If completed, you'll be able to improv everything else. If you'd like to help me make more content like this in the future, please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member. Thanks for watching, Dungeon Masters, and until next time, good night.